fellas. Um, Wyatt and Bailey, thank you guys. We're here at uh, Coast Guard Station, Oak Island. Uh, beautiful station. Uh, when I w walked around and saw everything, I was like, I I'm really jealous. <laughs> you guys got a killer setup here, and uh, and you love what you do. Of course. So we'll start with uh, you, Bailey. Like, how? What got you into it? What? Because you, you're young. You're what? Twenty two. Twenty two. Yeah. So fresh out of high school, is it, did you start right out of high school, or it took a year between high school? So I joined when I was nineteen. Okay. How? What? Why? <laughs> there. Other than I didn't want to go to school. Didn't want to do college. I knew I, that was not a route I wanted to take. I knew if I joined college, I was either going to drop out, fail out. So I was like, I got to choose something else. Didn't want to do any trade. Didn't really like the other mission sets of the other branches. Coast Guard is the only one in the Department of Homeland Security. I liked their mission a little better, so went that route instead. Yeah, and you were originally from where? Lancaster, Pennsylvania. So no water experience, no No nothing. water at all, all farmland. So, and and like it's, you just chose Coast Guard just because you wanted, like you said, be a part of the public. Now, yep. you picked up some water skills really damn fast. I mean, what are you, how are your rankings so far? And you've only been in for two three, years? Three years. Three years. Yep. Uh, so what have you accomplished in three years? May 85. Um, got all my quals to make E5, so Cox and all of that. Went to my A school, which is a school you learn to learn your job. So I went to Boston's my A school. Was here all three years of my career so far. So started out as a non-rate, then a third class, and now I'm a second class here. Um, so it's just a lot of training, studying, training, getting out on that water and doing it every day. Yeah. What? So the training that you just said, like, what, what is, what, where did you start? What, what was your first, besides, well, you started boot camp. Right. And then did you get to choose, like, what you wanted to do with the Coast Guard? Or is that kind of like, hey, you got to go do this. This is what we're going to teach you. Right. So once you get out of boot camp, you're a non-rate, so you don't have a job yet. So you kind of go right into the fleet and you get to see all the different jobs that the Coast Guard does. Mm -hmm. From there, you can shadow all the different rates, see what jobs you want to choose. And then from there, then that's when you choose your A school. Um, just your different jobs like bosun's mate, machinery technician, all those different jobs. Can I pause you real quick? What, mm -hmm. What's A school? That's just, it's a, Type of training in Yorktown, Virginia. Okay. Uh, you get sent there to learn everything about your job so that when you can advance up to third class, getting out of A school, you already have an entry level like education pretty much on what you have to do for that job. Okay. So finished A school and that was cool that you said like you got to choose what you want to do, right? Right. Yep. So so you decided to choose- Both since me. Okay. And how long was that process in school? Um, so there's two different programs that we have. It's the Bosun's Mate uh, RAP program, which is just if you get boat crew qualified at your unit as a non-rate, you can go to the RAP program, which is six weeks, um, cuts out the whole boat crew section of A school mm -hmm. that the normal A school class for Bosun's Mate have. So the normal class would be 14 weeks and you're learning everything mm -hmm. from line handling to driving on a course, your different chartings and stuff like that. Um, it was nice because I was able to learn all of that here prior to leaving for school. So I only had to do a six week program. Mm -hmm. um, from there, I was able to get a billet, a job back here at the unit. So I was able to like progress in my career while staying at the same place. We all know it, but a lot of people that are listening might know, what is a bosun's mate? Uh, bosun's mate are your boat drivers, yeah. to say the least. We do a lot. Uh, we do a lot of boardings, a uh, lot of deck maintenance. Um, I kind of refer to it every time someone asks me, how does, you know, the deck side versus engineering side work for boats and mates? We kind of work on top of the boats and engineers kind of work inside and on the boats. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I, that's the number one question is like, what would they, aren't they captains or what? But no, the boats and mates. So yep. yeah, was, tell me though, a little bit of experience. I mean, what's some of the, in the past three years, what have, what did, I don't know, what, what can you tell me? What was some of the most exciting things that you've seen so far? Right. So Pretty much every time I come to work, I'm going to see something different, whether it be a different case, different mission sets and stuff like that. I think some of the most exciting things that we do are the boardings that we do here, just working with the public, mm -hmm. just being able to get out there, you know, educate people when we do do boardings, educating the people, you know, on the safety equipment, things like that on the water, um, and just all the different types of cases we have, you know, from people in the water to burning boats, things like that. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, for people listening. Oak Island's right off the Cape Fear River in North Carolina and um, busy uh, port too. I mean, what there's what, what do they usually ship in here? It's uh, We have one of the largest military ports here. That's right. So uh, Sunny Point Matsu is right up the river here. Uh -huh. So a lot of military vessels coming in, in and out. On the way up here, we saw 
there was something. It looked like it was so heavy on the bow. I think it was a bunch of oil or something. I don't know. But yeah, they also have state port up there right in Wilmington. So. Okay. And then I think after that bridge uh got hit, we got a lot of their traffic too. Bridge so, got hit? Up in Baltimore. Oh, oh yeah. No. yeah. I thought you were right here. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Thankfully. Yeah. Yeah, this is the first place you were stationed, correct? Right. When you got to choose it? Um, so right out of boot camp, I was just given orders. Okay. Uh Got stationed here, fell in love with it, yeah. and then I found out I was able to come back after my school, and I was like, I'm going to do it. So now that you've committed to here, mm -hmm. well, how's it work from now? Like, I mean, can you stay here? Or um, So I'll be finishing up my billet here, finishing up my four years, and then once that up, um, I get new orders to a new place. Okay. So after that, it's kind of, yeah, following yep. orders. Do you want to travel much. more? Or? I would like to. Yeah. I mean, we pretty much do it for free. Get yeah. moved around. Why not see the world while I still can? Yeah, so. yeah. I got a buddy of mine we were talking about earlier. He, um, same thing. It was all over the place and he ended up in Hawaii, and yeah. Outer Banks, now Florida. So, yep. yeah, it's pretty awesome. What, um, do you continue, want to continue, you know, obviously scaling up? Mm -hmm. Um, what would be your future goals? Right now, I'm just kind of focusing on my qualification stuff here. Uh, I would like to advance on BM1, someday be an instructor at a schoolhouse someday, but. That's a couple of years down the road. So. so are you still in school right now? I'm not, no. So okay. when we're working on our qualifications, we do that in-house here at the station. Uh, we have different qualifications that we have to meet in order to do specific jobs. Um, so some qualifications like boarding officer has a school that you can attend. Um, I was fortunate enough to go to a motor lifeboat school over in Washington last year to for my basic coxswain qualification, which helped tremendously. Nice. So there is different schools that you can go to for different trainings. A lot of the qualifications happen in, in house here. How was that over in Washington? I bet that was cool. It was cool. Yeah. It was a very different environment over there than it is on the East Coast. Was it mostly inside training or? No. So it was out, all out on the boats, hands-on training, working out of uh, Cape Disappointment on the motor lifeboats it's, every day. It's totally different there. I went yeah. out to Alaska uh, a couple of years ago and night and day different, especially with those tides and mm -hmm. like... Like there's no beach, you know. Yep. It's it's rock. Yeah, <laughs> pretty know? much. So yeah, that's cool. Good experience out there though. It was an awesome experience. Yeah. So grateful for it. It helped me mature in my my journey here in the Coast Guard. So. Yeah, man. Oh, I when I first met you guys, um, I was like shocked. You guys are you're 22, and how old are you? I'm 25. 25. Yeah. yeah. And you guys are already killing it. If I were to do it again, I, <laughs> I would love to. Go. And apparently, I just found out I can do the Coast yeah. Guard. Right. What, yep. what can I do? I could be 42. Yes, right. Yeah. And I can do, um, I can join the reserve, I think. Mm -hmm. We talked about it. I forget yeah. what it was. Yeah. You can join the reserve or you can go active duty. So. We should do that. It'd be a whole episode of Qualified <laughs> yeah. Academy in boot camp. <laughs> That'd be <laughs> awesome. No, I mean, that's awesome. I'm stoked for you. I, I hope you continue to grow and scale up. Thank you. So, Wyatt, now you started a little later in life, right? I was 19. 19, okay. 20. Yeah. I grew up in South Carolina. Mm -hmm. And then, um, Bailey was a little smarter than me. I I tried <laughs> I tried college, didn't work out, and I uh, went back home, started working. And my parents were like, "You're not staying here," you know. Like, and my best friend, uh, he's actually up in he's in the Outer Banks too. Tucker, he joined right out of a school or uh, right out of high school. Mm -hmm. They're like, "Call a recruiter," and I was like, "All right, you know, call them." You know, I was like, "They're they're pretty busy. Like, they'll have I'll have time." Went to Meps, which is you know you go do your physical and all that. Yeah. And he told me, he was like, yeah, he's like, it'll probably be a year before you ship out. And I was like, perfect. I was like, plenty of time to so screw you, around and- Yeah, maybe have a little fun at it. Yeah. And so you like, were 18 you know, or 19? Though. I was 19. 19. Yeah, working full time. And I was like, I can back out. And then dude calls me like two weeks later. And he's like, uh, yeah. He's like, somebody dropped. Um, You want to go in like a month? And my stepdad was right there. He's like, so yes. And I was like, <laughs> sure. And I was like, all right. Next thing you know, I'm like getting my head shaved and getting yelled at, but it's the best decision I ever made. I think so too, man. Yeah. Um, and that's just you, when you tell me, I've heard that same story from so many damn people and there's like no regrets at all. No, definitely not. And well, you know, people get into that mindset where like, you know, I got to go to work, this and that. I mean, every job is going to suck yeah. sometimes. Yeah, no, it, yeah. I know that if I was 25 and not in the Coast Guard, I wouldn't have a retirement plan. Yeah. There's no way I'd have health insurance and like, you know. I got it pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what uh, what were you working before? I did tree work. Okay. Yeah. So my stepdad had a business, and I did a bunch of different stuff. I worked construction for a while. I was a server. Did tree work, and did you have any experience on the water? Yeah, a lot. Okay. So, um, growing up, I grew up in Beaufort, which mm -hmm. is in between uh, Charleston and Savannah. 
so we were always on the boats. I, I think um, I was like 12 and I got my boater's license and cut grass in the summertime and raked them in the winter and bought my first little John boat. Nice. And that was it. And then surprisingly, I didn't go BM. Now, you know? <laughs> does like having any experience on the water help as you go into the Coast Guard with like any kind of ranking? I, I think if you have your captain's license, that helps for sure. But I think it helps with what rate you choose, really. Yeah. I mean, I knew line handling and stuff like that. And I, Coast Guard has their own way of teaching somebody how to drive a boat. Yeah. And I, it was different for me. Like, I grew up working on stuff, too. So, wow. I wanted to go that aspect. It was kind of special for me to, um, you know, learn how to drive boats from my stepdad. And, yeah. you know, not saying that the Coast Guard's wrong or that I'm right or I'm wrong, Coast Guard's right. It was just something that, to me, I was like, I don't want to lose this. You know, I don't want to be like, taught, forget, you know, everything that you grew up learning yeah so. yeah yeah but for sure i'm yeah. um, the same way when i was picked up the job with cito i mean everybody's got different ways to right. do it but i mean if you get the job done right and safe it's all that matters really yeah exactly so same situation you're 19 you go to boot camp and then once you completed that what was your a school then we had uh so i left same thing as a non-rate they gave you a list of like you know generally describe where you, where you want to go and i was like anywhere on the east coast so they sent me down to cape canaveral florida and I was on a 87-foot uh, patrol boat. Okay. Loved it. Stayed there for about a year. And then went um, MK, Machinery Technician A School. Uh, that's same thing up in uh, Virginia. Did that. And then um, got another list of places I could go. And they sent me down to the bayou. So I spent three and a half years in Louisiana. And oh, yeah. That's awesome, <laughs> yeah, man. I was oh, in, how'd you like it? I did. I liked it a lot. Yeah. You know, And it was hot. It was really hot. Um Really good food, really good people. Yeah. And that was AIDS and Navigation. So a little different mission than what we have here. I loved it. Um, did my time there. Took my test to rank up. I don't know how I made it, but I did. <laughs> and then... Uh, That's how I feel yeah. sometimes. Like with my cat. I was... I don't even... It was hard. <laughs> yeah. I saw the list and I saw this place and I was like, going back home, you know? Nice. So, I love it. I'm so, happy to be here. So how long were you there? In Three and a half years. So I was there at the beginning of 2020 until... I got here last July. Last July. Okay. Yep. So you're still pretty new here. Yeah, relatively new. Yeah. So I'm still working on, uh, I think, one qualification. So you were there for three years. And then is that when your time was up and then they gave you a list of where you could go next? Like so I had a year left. But since I made second class, um, each unit has a specific amount of positions for each rank and rate. Okay. So at that unit, it was a third class machinery technician. And since I made second... There was no, you know, there was already a second there. Mm -hmm. So they gave me a list of orders and they're like, this is what to choose from. So what were your options? So there's um, a couple cutters, which I need a cutter for my career to get underway mm -hmm. um, and just have the sea time. Those are my top three. I think it was like Puerto Rico on a cutter and then San Diego. And there's a um, buoy tender up in um, Philly. Those are my top three. And this is number four. So I got my fourth pick. So you chose here. Yeah. Do you, I did choose here, yeah. So did you have to be on the cutter though, or to get no? The so like whenever they give you this list, you just it's called your your dream sheet, okay. And you just rank them from like I think there was like sixty different places I could go, and I was like, all right, well I'm not going to list you know sixty. I put my top thirty, you know, and those three cutters were my top three because I needed them. I didn't get them unfortunately, but that's all right. It worked out, you know. This is my number four, mm -hmm. and I would not have changed a thing. So awesome. Yeah, I don't blame you. Yeah, so I always forget to you. Okay, so you were in. You already were serving for longer than you have. Because I'm trying to compare the two. Because it sounds like you were put here, right? Yep. And you had because you what well, you already had your three years in, and and because a lot of kids are going to ask, and they always ask me too, like where where do how do I decide where to go? I guess that's the number one question, and you don't necessarily get to decide, but I guess until you get to that point, yeah, you have a little bit more. Like I would say, you know, no offense to the other branches, but yeah, they're like you do this job and you go here. Mm -hmm. Like with us, it's like you can choose your job and. We'll give you a list to pick from, which is pretty nice. So, yeah. Um, I've been in January. will be six years for me. Six years? Yep. So what are you doing here at Station Oak Island? So I'm an engineer, um, machinery technician. I'm qualified on the 47s. Um, those boats don't move without an engineer. Mm -hmm. So there's only a couple of us at the station trying to train up some more people. Uh, boat crew. And then last September, I went down to Charleston. We have the uh, boarding officer school. Mm -hmm. So law enforcement that whole side of the gig and then oh so you get to get through all that process too yeah like, that's a whole different thing and use well eventually yes eventually okay yeah. all right so yeah. you've so what's next for you then because 
you you still got some pretty good amount of work to, but you've come a long way in a short right. period of time. And you and now you're kind of seems like you got your locked in your career, what you want to stick with, correct? Or do you want yeah. to try to scale up to do something else? Absolutely. I've, and, you know, that's the end goal, obviously, is always keep ranking up and you know, take the money. But um, we're both pretty much locked in for our rates. You can always switch if you want to, but I mm -hmm. mean, you're going to go like for both of us, we'd go back a rank. We'd have to go to school again if we wanted to do something else. So I'm going to stick with uh, MK. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, um, you know, end goal for me is like make chief. Okay, cool. Yeah, so. so what's that? What do you got to do? I mean, take the test, study, you know, <laughs> yeah. stay qualified. I have to actually get underway for one year to make first. C time, right? Yep, C time. So i um, thinking about picking up a position to go um, over in Bahrain. Where was, where is that? The, where's the closest cutter from Oak Island? I'm trying to think. Um, I think the Maple in Fort Macon. Okay. I think that's the closest one. Yeah. So is that right? Yeah. Um, so that would that be your first choice to go to for so no that would um it would have to be available for me and um we have priorities uh with like here's a priority six so i'd have to be at end of tour and that would have to be available and like goes off marks and a couple different other things so i'm gonna kind of take a shortcut put in for a solicitation to go to bahrain mm -hmm. and that's a cutter over there so i'll spend like 13 months over there makes me a priority one so that when I come back, I can pick, I'll have a lot better chance of getting exactly what I want. Mm -hmm. Do that and uh, hopefully fast track me to first, but we'll yeah, see. I feel like a lot of people um, that I've spoke to that are younger, they always say, well, do they just put you on a boat like a cutter and go for for right out the gate, you know? But I don't think that's necessarily true, obviously. They can. They mm -hmm. can, okay. I mean, that's what I did in Florida. Okay. It wasn't a big boat, it was an 87 foot. I mean, we still did patrols. We still got it's out for big. like a week. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> week at a time, you know? So we'd be gone and, you know, they just threw me into it. They're like, hey, you know, this is where you're going. Here's your orders, report by this time. Get What's you. the cutter that comes to Riceville Beach all the time? You guys know? It used to be the Coast Guard Bay Bear. Yeah, I see that. Okay, yeah, oh. I, I see one at Wrightsville Beach. So is was, it white? Yeah, yeah I yeah, believe that's so. That's 87. Um, that's, so do you guys know where they're out of? Because I'm always curious. Oh, Fort Bay. Okay, yeah. okay. So I don't know. I was wondering if that's an option. It sounds like they're just bouncing around, though. Yeah, they do patrols. So they'll go south, they'll go north, whatever they got to do. Um, mm -hmm. They get different missions. If they get SAR, obviously, they'll be offshore. What's SAR? Is search and rescue. Oh, yeah, duh. Sorry. sorry. I, well, I have to ask because <laughs> yeah, a lot of people here listen is not right. going to know. So you got to do, is that kind of what you want to do? So you have to get the seat time as well? Yep. There's kind of the same, kind of different. Um, the things that I have to achieve are more targeted towards bosun's mainly. So like the testing and stuff to advance, um, to make first class chief, things like that. Um, also, have to get like deck watch officer letter and stuff like that. Um, to advance up to chief, but it's pretty much the same process, just a little different knowledge and jobs and stuff like that that you have to achieve. Okay. Another question a lot of people ask me too, do the Coast Guard, this is probably a dumb question, but do they get to shoot guns? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They get okay. to shoot a lot of guns. So what is that training all done in boot camp or do you guys have- uh, So they do the pistol qualification in boot camp and then- here um we have a couple of different guns we have the 240 for our escorts we got the m4 the 870 and now we just switch over to glocks so we do all of our shooting and training in-house right right here yeah okay cool yeah so we'll either take our guns offshore and set up like a security zone shoot out there or we'll go to the range so you do it's mostly used for escort or like escorting people yes like, okay yeah well our i mean whenever we do boardings and stuff for like safety all that we just have our glocks on us mm -hmm. um and then for like escorts and stuff, yeah, we'll fully kit it out. Okay. Kind of like you saw uh, whenever we loaded up. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And that was for an escort. Yes. Yeah, that was pretty great. Like pretty cool to see. Yeah. yeah. They're fun. You know, they get long. That one was pretty I, It one. looked exciting. Like, all yeah. right, boys, we could kind of get, you yeah. know, loaded up today. And right. Go. Yeah, it's cool. Um, yeah. How often is that? Whenever they come in. Yeah. So. Depends on the needs. Yeah. Like once a week or? It fluctuates just when these boats are coming in and out. Changes all the time. So we really have no idea yeah, we until we get scheduled. You know, three a month or not a single one for, you know, two months. That's awesome. Yeah. So this, like I said, this station's awesome. I mean, touring through the whole thing was beautiful. Uh, the lifestyle around here looks, you know, obviously there's a lot of things going on that I probably don't even know about, but 
besides your off time seems pretty pretty laid back. I mean, you're always on call though. I mean, if something happens, you guys are you know going right. Yeah, if while we're here, yeah, if we're on Liberty, there's always two crews that are here. I mean, worst case scenario, what's Liberty? Um, so like Liberty is like our time off. So. Okay, so you have time off here too. Yeah, for I mean, so we just got here this morning, right? So we'll be here until Wednesday morning when Liberty is granted Wednesday morning. We're not coming back until Friday morning. Gotcha. So yep. you can leave. Yep. Yeah, we go home. But while you're here, you're still always even. Oh if, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Drop of the hat, you know. Yeah. Yeah. The SAR alarm goes off, then there's always a crew running down. You know. So yeah, if you're sound asleep, you gotta get the. Hat. Oh yeah, absolutely. That's happened that's, so many times. That's how I when yeah. I was a CTO. I was, you're like the best dream ever, and then it's like <laughs> yeah. or you, uh, I I I was get on work and then go home, shower, just make a good steak and gotta go. Yeah. Yep. You yeah. Know? Or there's been a plenty of times where you know you sit down for lunch. Like for me, I'll be in the engine room all day, get my hands cleaned up, sit down for lunch, and then like not even take the first bite, and it goes off, and I'm like, oh, all right. <laughs> But just the lifestyle around here, though, you guys get to, I mean, look, you got a nice little gym. Yep. Um, off time, too. I saw you guys got your own little boat ramp, too, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, I used to keep my boat here. It's pretty cool. It's not not every station is like that. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Senior Chief's pretty cool to let us keep our boats here. So That's awesome. we can use the boat ramp. Yeah. And, uh, you know, don't have to fight a million people for a parking oh, spot. So and it's, it's yeah. sucks. Yeah. All the people that end up on your page, you know. That's right. <laughs> it's, yeah, the boat ramp's out of control. I actually just met with... Um, uh, some of the wildlife officers, they had a little committee meeting about um, different improvements for boat ramps in the future. Like, do we make them bigger? Do we, like, is there too much parking? Is there not enough parking? And do you guys have to deal with boat ramp issues? I think wildlife manages most of that, right? Um, no, not really. So, I mean, like here we have our own. Um, in Louisiana, we always had to trailer our boat to different places to put it in. Yeah. So kind of a pain in the butt, but it's not nearly as bad as like Wrightsville. You know, yeah. down there, we could always find a spot here. I'd be like, I don't even know what we're going to do. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Where CB is a nightmare there. Oh, uh, yeah. Make them make the ramps bigger. More parking spots, please. So any other perks, though, that you guys, I mean, if you're 16, 17, 18, what is your best advice? I'll start with you for somebody that's maybe questioning what to do in life, because I was there. I've been there. I was I I. <laughs> When I, I went to Cape Fear Community College, I did the Marine Tech program there. And when I graduated, um, luckily I had a part-time job at Bradley Creek Marina and I had no idea. I didn't know like, if this is going to be worth it? What are the benefits? You know, I was like this close to go scallop fishing up north because there was so much money, <laughs> yeah. you know? But I'm so glad I didn't do that. I stuck it out with there. I got my captain's license, worked with CETO, and then this somehow fell together. But um, but if I were to go back, I would love to do what you guys do. I, I'm I'm super jealous when I walked around here the first day, and and I mean this is just a small station, just a little tiny piece of the puzzle. What the Coast Guard has available, right. um. But I yeah, I mean if if for any advice that you're to give somebody that's young, what would you say? Like, I think just go for it. I was a little hesitant to do it, but I thought, why not? What else am I going to do? And I know I was going to have fun with it. Mm -hmm. Um, I was also a little worried about like the work life versus your personal life. Like, you know, if, am I going to handle both? And especially being here, like you get, you know, you work those two days, like Wyatt was saying, and you have two days off. So it's easy. I feel like I'll speak for myself. I don't know about you, but it's easy to separate your personal life with your work life. So when I go home, I'm able to be enjoying my time off, you know, have those two days, if family's in town, things like that. Um, but I mean, I haven't met a single person that has regretted it. Yeah, I, me too. I mean, I feel like, and that is a, one thing that maybe pauses people is like you said the personal life mm -hmm. and um but every for the most part i mean i don't know i see everybody's happily married and got yeah. successful are you guys are you married or not i'm not nope soon to be so hopefully to be. okay good hell yeah, yeah man awesome <laughs> she better say yes <laughs> <laughs> she's listening yeah, now. yeah. yeah she will be <laughs> um yeah so uh, that's the thing that people i feel like need to understand too it's not always going to infect if anything i see more people happier doing this and for sure so and then what about you though if you were to give some advice to somebody I, yeah i mean i love it and you know to get a chance to be a part of something greater really you know and we have like we have a great crew here so it sucks you know sometimes coming on for 48 or 72 hours but it's like we get along with everybody like i consider everybody here like part of my family yeah you know, i love it here and we have fun all the time yeah. you know sometimes it's just stuff sucks but it, that's that's the job that's you know? reality that's life yeah, exactly yeah. and you know i'll retire when i'm 39 yeah come on yeah i, I told uh my girl sydney i was like yeah when i retire 
I don't want to work more than three days a week. <laughs> so like, when you guys are all done though, what's the goal? I mean, do you feel like you're going to stick around for a while? When I first joined, I didn't think so. The more I get to do my job and the more things I learn about what I can do in the Coast Guard, I'm kind of more leaning towards I'm probably going to stay in. Um, just like we talked about those benefits and stuff like that. Like what other place are you going to get this kind of experience mm -hmm. and get paid for it? Well, what are you, and even if you don't stay in, I feel like you can get a great job after that. Like, what are you thinking about? Yeah, that? absolutely. I mean, all my qualifications that I have, all the schools I went to, Honda school, Detroit school, that's all transferable to the civilian world. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, I'm pretty set after I get out or, you know, they're going to have to force me out, but <laughs> if they want me out, but I mean, if I did get out, I have so much knowledge that the Coast Guard has given me that, you know, I wouldn't be too worried. Yeah. So I think it's a great gig. Fellas, I'm jealous. Um, I hope everybody listens, you know, learn a little bit about this. And yeah. uh, uh, thank you for having me. Yeah, it's a beautiful course, station. Absolutely. And um, I wish you guys the best of luck with your career. Yeah, thank, thank you, you so yeah. much. Thanks yeah. for coming. If anybody's interested in joining the Coast Guard, click the link in our bio or go to gocoastguard.com. That's gocoastguard.com.